Hey everyone, uh, my name is Paul, I am one of the instructions uh, at CG Cookie and I need to get this thing so you can see my slides. So I want to talk to you today about storyboarding in 3D space. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of people in the room have storyboarded, are storyboarders, know about the process. Um, and essentially, storyboarding software, we're talking digital, um, uh, breaks down into two camps. The first um, would be tools that are specifically designed for storyboarding. Programs such as Storyboarder, Boards, and of course, Storyboard Pro by Toon Boom. And uh, we all kind of know what Storyboard Pro can do and why it is one of the most popular pieces of software for storyboarding. These are boards uh, done by a UK artist called Paul Coulthard for uh, Warhammer Dawn of War 3. Um, and, he, and this is generally what it looks like when you just use Storyboard Pro. And then the other camp are tools which allow you to storyboard. They're tools designed for other things, but they you know, allow for storyboarding to be done in them. And so some examples, Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint, Critter. Here's an example of Clip Studio Paint um, with some storyboarding uh, layout here. Uh, these storyboards were done by an artist called Kay Vassi uh, for her um, uh, personal uh, project. Now, usually what we find is that to get storyboards into some sort of 3D environment, we combine tools like Storyboard Pro and Blender. And what usually happens is that um, a scene might be made inside of Blender and then the play blast or plate would be rendered out, used as a background and then drawn over in Storyboard Pro, such as you see here. This is again uh, Paul's work by, uh, for Axis Studios. And so that background obviously is uh, Blender and the foregrounds are illustrated in Storyboard Pro. But Blender is a tool that allows you to storyboard. Uh, and so storyboarding with Blender can take many forms. Uh, this is a storyboard that I created uh, a couple of years ago for CG Cookie um, for a project <laughs> called Eat Sheep. And basically, we're using the 2D elements, but in 3D space, as you can see here. Um, we can take advantage of working directly in 3D space. While we're in there, we can illustrate and edit each element in situ. And we can do things like um, depth of field effects, any sort of modifiers or effects that you can do with uh, 3D objects inside uh, of Blender, you can sort of do with a grease pencil object. Now, we can use Blender much like a 2D storyboarding tool. Uh, these are some boards by, uh, oh, let's see if I can read this, Matthias Mandiola. Um, he is part of the crew that is developing Grease Pencil and he's got a couple of add-ons uh, which I'll talk about in a moment. And um, this again is how we would normally storyboard. We would like draw a plate or a, a background and then elements and then just animate the elements that we need to for animatic purposes. Or you can build the model in 3D space and instead of rendering the plate or the play blast to send to Storyboard Pro, you can then draw your 2D elements in situ inside of Blender. And so here is another example uh, from Axis Studios. You can see the Blender um, set there. You can see how many keyframes this all has because uh, we basically can go from Storyboard's animatic and they're kind of inter interchangeable. And these elements can be animated. The cameras, because Blender can work with real-world values, um, all your camera settings, you know, your depth of field effects, and all, all of that sort of stuff uh, can be set uh, as you would for you know, your, your real-world analog. So your drawings are generally to scale. Blender allows you to use a number of tools within it uh, to uh, enable storyboarding. The first, of course, is Grease Pencil. Um, we also have a sequencer, and I'll talk a little bit about the story, uh, the story pencil add-on. This is already inside of Blender, it's just not enabled, and if anyone has used add-ons in Blender, um, they're very easy to enable, disable. There's a lot in there that isn't enabled by default, so that Blender will actually just load up and you can use it. And this is such a one. 
And we also have the asset library. So let's first talk about Grease Pencil. Um, here you see a Grease Pencil object uh, floating over there. We have a camera and we have a dope sheet or timeline uh, where we can set keyframes. Each frame, uh, well, we're looking through the camera at the Grease Pencil object and the Grease Pencil object can be keyframe, uh, different elements, different layers of the Grease Pencil object can be keyframed to create a sequence, right? And so this is a fairly standard method of creating a storyboard. So then the next thing we want to look at is the sequencer. Now the sequencer is very much like uh, your um, uh, digital editing software, okay? We call it the VSE. And here you can drag and drop any number of clips, stills, or even scenes from Blender directly onto a timeline and at any time just sort of access them, edit them, put transitions, what have you. And so here are some of um, Matthias's uh, storyboards from his example. And you can sort of see that these clips were pre-rendered and then used in the sequencer. As I said before, we've got this thing called the storyboard add-on. And what this does is it can bring together the grease pencil and the sequencer um, in a manner in which we can utilize it more easily. Now, I will say that even though it's an add-on that is accessed through uh, a grease pencil interface, uh, you don't necessarily have to use grease pencil objects. You can use 3D uh, objects in any scene and it works in much the same way. So what we've got here is we can see that we've got our sequencer um, and we can see our preview uh, up there. But each of those blocks, instead of being a single still or a sequence, they're actually a scene inside of Blender. And what we do is we can select a scene we can click on edit, and then that will automatically take us to another workspace, which is the scene. And in this case, it's in Grease Pencil. And what I did is I, sorry, Matthias, wherever you are. So what I did is to illustrate this, we've got the keyframes down on the dope sheet. And what I wanted to do is just duplicate them to give this guy a bit of a, an extra bounce just by copying and pasting a couple of keyframes so that when it plays, he just sort of does a bit of a double bounce. And what happens is that once you've edited, you go back to the sequencer, that edit is sitting there. And so the advantage of this is that you're in the same bit of software, and if you're there with a director of photography or the producer of the animation or whatever, and they want this edit done, it can be done on the fly. And if you're even in that animatic stage, you know, that edit is ready to go for the next render. Blender also has an asset library. Uh, and this is something that is really, really useful for a lot of um, you know, scene building. But I also like to use it, because we're building scenes, um, for t 2D objects. So I like to make a lot of my own uh, grease pencil uh, assets that will sit in the file, and I can just literally drag and drop them into my scene. So you don't constantly drawing, right? And so here I was recreating that scene uh, from earlier. We, we've got a camera move and basically, yep, you take a rock, you drop it in situ, you can take another asset, do the same thing, drag it wherever you want, and then that scene is built. We can see it um, in the sequencer and then it just plays through. Um, so, I've taken a very short time <laughs> for this talk, so uh, I'm going to sign off. Um, once again, my name is Paul Kajeji, I'm an instructor at cgcookie.com. Um, there's a free course if you want to learn more about Grease Pencil, it's called Draw, it's available through CG Cookie and our website, um, on the website and on YouTube. And tomorrow morning, if you guys want to see a demonstration of how I draw in Grease Pencil, uh, I'll be in the Jane Theatre at about 9am tomorrow morning, um, you know, nice and late, I think you'll all make it, um, showing you how to, well, how I draw um, in Grease Pencil. So hope to see some of you there. Uh, thanks very much for taking the time.